Welcome back. Today we'll actually dive into some Rust code for this project. I uh, wanted to learn the Rust programming language, and I figured the task of writing a small sharding statsd proxy in Rust would be a great way to do so. Uh, so let's begin our slow stumble through Rust together. We'll start by looking at the sample UDP socket code from the Rust website and go from there. Luckily, they have a pretty good example for getting up and running. All right, looks like they bind to an address in port, create a buffer to store data in. They receive into that buffer, and it looks like this will return the number of bytes that were received, and the source is likely the source IP that the packet came from. If you don't know what UDP is, go take a quick glance at Wikipedia or anything really. It's not too hard to understand as opposed to TCP. Um, and then it looks like the code let's see, reverses the data it received and sends it back to the source. Okay, cool. We'll go from there. So I've copied it into here. Let me make sure that it still runs. It does. Okay. All right. Um, in order to test this, I well, first of all, I changed to bind to my local interface and the port that I wanted. And since we're dealing with UDP data, uh, and network programming, I needed to have data to test with, so I created a simple Python script that is going to send a, a sample statsd metric message to that port. It's actually going to send two every second, and we'll keep running forever. Start that, and we'll run this, and right, the roof code doesn't do anything because it just sends back to the source. So let's, this is how I would do it in Python. So let's start there. And print, not a function. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, oh, I wonder if there is a macro called print that. And that's also helpful. Might be missing a string literal to format with. Neat. String formatting is built in. Let's see what that gets us. I wonder. I've actually seen print ln used. I wonder if that's the difference. Probably not. I wonder if it's a um, address thing. I did have one through some scratch code, so let's see what I got here. Line. Hmm. We'll try. Nope, we'll try that. Okay. Oh, buffer is bytes, isn't it? Okay. Right. I did, like I said, I did some scratch code, so I'm trying to remember exactly what we had here. Pardon me for kind of going for my sheet, cheat sheet. Actually, amount, this is what I have something I want to work through on the call, so we'll uh, do that later. And, right, so. Do I have to do an import there? Let's see. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I think it also said something about Above here, let's see. No, I guess not. Wow, I'm really fumbling out the gate here. What is it from here that is different? So unwrapped into data and then from UTF-8. Oh, I am doing an address app buffer. Yeah, yeah. 
So what does print expect? Also, do I need to include a string? Let's do a quick run through data types on strings. <laughs> oh, this one has uh, some sample data for, sample code for. That's standard IO, string stuff. How are we printing in here? You guessed that with guess, mutable string. Let me make sure that I can even just do this. Okay, so it does that. Why on earth is that not working? In the current scope, right, but it, so do I need to do, oh, that's not very helpful. Okay, that's what it was. I had to explicitly import standard string, which, you know, kind of makes sense, but it was a little confusing. Because it, what, what was confusing about it is it had no problem with string. Like function or associated item not found in str, but really it's because I hadn't imported str. I That's a strange error message. Misleading. Okay, we got that. Now this is what I was expecting to see again, but it looks like it doesn't print warnings if there's errors to address. So this variable does not need to be mutable because I will not be mu mutating the socket. So let's do what it says. Cool, all right. Um, now we have our data that we printed out. We printed out data that we received from the socket. And right, this is only allocating a buffer array of 10, but eventually I need to choose a buffer that's larger than the max size of a UDP packet. All right, now we have the full data that is being sent by our Python script. That's helpful. Okay. So now let's go through the code and get this to where we want. Uh, one, one thing when I saw this sample code was the use of the question mark operator. Turns out that that is an error propagation helper. Um, and what it means is if there's an issue with the bind, it will return the result. It'll be a result with a flag of error, whatever the right terminology is, but basically it will be an error result. So it's going to return it from the main function call. That's not what I want to do. Um, what I really want to do is something I saw while going through the Rust book. Just do that. Could not bind. This is what I want. If bind fails, if this port's already in use, or somehow I don't have permission to bind to that, I want it to fail. And there's another one right here. So if we error, fail to receive, it's going to return an error result, and I don't want to do that either. All right, so ultimately what I can do is remove this. Main doesn't need a type. I can remove this block and condense it, and then this is where, like, if all went well, main was expected to return a result because of the declaration up here. 
So we don't need to return OK. OK is just an OK result, it looks like. So I want to do that, and should be roughly the same. Let's see, can I use, all oh, right. Um, where'd it go? Oh, right, down here. Yeah, I don't want to send back, so let's not do that. Cool, we got data still. All right, that's good. Let's keep going so that way we have a little more substance to talk about. Um, let's go for my scratch code. So the plan was listen for UDP, parse the messages. There may be more than one stats D metric in a message. So we need to add some looping logic. Uh, got some scratch code to make this a little bit less painful for you to watch. So stuff that I've written and, and tested earlier we'll do while running and then we'll actually I'm just going to copy all of this okay Get that out of there because we're going to print after we parse now okay 1024 buffer a running flag so we keep looping. Receive into the buffer some to-do notes from when I was thinking through the logic you know, pertaining to code. Um, all right, so we receive into the buffer. And this is handy. Luckily, the, the string module has UTF-8 parser, which we've seen um, in the you know, previous example where I just printed out the exact data. And if, okay, what this does, so from UTF-8 returns a result. It's either an okay or an error result. If it's okay, unwrap just returns straight away the value, like the payload of that okay result, which in this case is gonna be a string since we're converting UTF-8 bytes to a string. But if this fails, say it's not valid UTF-8, um, unwrap is going to, I believe it's gonna return or just crash. I think it's gonna crash with an error message. Yeah. Pardon me if I'm wrong. All right, we're on 13 minutes, let's keep going. So. Luckily, the string module has a helper, like string objects have a helper for splitting on lines. This returns an iterator, which is great, so we can just loop over the, each line and we will print it. And this should happen repeatedly. Cool. So if you notice, there's this right here, which I think is interesting. Um, originally, I was doing this, where I just parsed the buffer because I didn't know how to deal with slices. Let's see what happens if we do that. This is not a good example, but let's modify our stats-d sample code to show the reason for using a slice. Okay. Here you see I reduced the length of this tag key to COU, which is supposed to be country. So if you notice that there's some COU lines in here, but notice the end. The buffer was preserved between receive calls. If you recall that we are receiving into the buffer, a shared buffer, persistent buffer, and beyond this is what was in the buffer previously. <clears throat> so that's why we need to use a slice here. And the right way to use do that is from the beginning of the buffer up to the amount received. Luckily, most network programming APIs, when they're receiving or sending, they'll tell you exactly how much data they sent or received. So this is why amount is helpful. 
And here, notice that that old data is ignored. The data is still in the buffer, but we made a slice that ignores it. Cool. All right, this is a good place to stop. Um, we'll continue on the journey later. Thanks for watching.